ang sabi ng doktor, kung ganyan ang, vita, kung ganyan ang result sa mga test ni Greco, he has 36 hours to live. After 36 hour window, pag hindi, natin, pag hindi nyo na ikarga itong mga gamot na to, wala na yan, mamatay na yan. Nagkaroon ako ng COVID, it was severe, and then uh, naging critical. Um, I'm here to tell you the story on uh, how I survived. Um, it was a miracle so that uh, yung mga uh, pag nangyari sa inyo, alam nyo rin ang gagawin nyo, that there are alternatives that you can do. Uh, mas save natin ang mga buhay. Dahil nakakamatay talaga ang COVID. Ang tumama sa akin, Delta. Napakabilis po ng Delta. Ang pagkain ko, gulay at kanin. Bihirang bihirang bihira ako uh, magkarne. I, I stay in the sun for about mga 30 minutes every day. Hanggang 45 minutes. Tapos I... Um, and then I run sa treadmill for another 30 to 45 minutes every day. Napakalakas po ng hangin ko and then ang um, vitamins ko and supplements ko, ang dami-dami ko iniinom. Isang baso halos o isang baso araw-araw. I eat healthy, then I lift weights. Sa bahay ko po may sarili akong weights. So, ganun po. Very healthy living ako. And um, kahit itong pumasok yung COVID, I was, I was very confident na Hindi ako tatabla niya na malakas ako, malakas ang resistensya ko. And then if ever um, pumasok sa akin yan, eh, uh, mula yan, kumbaga kayang-kaya ko nga. So the dreaded time came. Um, one day, last month, bigla akong nilagnat. Tapos I had symptoms na um, uh, meron ako mga ubo-ubo. Aminia, Greco's wife, uh, we are COVID survivors. Actually, at first, we thought it was just a common flu. Um, it started with our driver, then house help, then I got the fever. So, it was like a flu in all my symptoms. Um, I don't usually get sick, so I thought, uh, iba to ah. Um, I had mild symptoms, and then lastly, si Greco. So August 16 was his first symptom. He had fever, body malay, and then every day he would have new symptoms. And then the cough niya was getting worse and worse. So after a week of isolation in the room, kami dalawa halos nagsabay kami. We were isolated in our room. To, because we had kids. I tested positive using an antigen rapid test. So, I saw that I was positive to COVID. So, when I tested positive for COVID, a few days after, si Greco had nagpa rt -PCR siya, and he was also positive to COVID. At as nagpa-test na ako, nag-test ako, nag-positive nga ako kaming mag-asawa. So, nag-isolate na po kagad kami, mag-asawa, started to treat the symptoms. Um, sabi ko, wala to, kaya kaya to. And sabi ko na, ano, I'll, I'll, do, I'll treat myself sa bahay. I was determined, um, I didn't want to go to the hospital. But more, more than that, I didn't want to go through isolation and intubation. So, mga kaibigan ko, nasabihin ako, pare, pa-X-ray ka na. Para po check up ko muna, blood test, etc., etc. Um, and then as the days went by, yun na, nanghihina na ako, tapos yung mga ubo ko nag-worsen. Um, and it was really worse. So, um, after a couple of days, um, yung meron akong kaibigan na doktor, um, pumunta na siya sa akin sa bahay. 
para i-treat ako dahil ayaw ko nga magpa-ospital. Um, After a week of isolation in our room, kami dalawa, his oxygen started to dip lower and lower. So, we asked our friend doctor if she could give Greco an IV dextrose para sa bahay because he doesn't want to be brought to the hospital because he knew the protocol was severe in, in hospitals. He might get intubated and it will, he will be isolated like no company will be allowed to watch out, watch for him. So, after a week of um, isolation, he was given remdesivir by our friend doctor who, who goes to our house once a day to give the medicine. And after three days, she was, he was given tocilizumab. When I treat niya ako, I ako ng remdesivir and tosi. Um, but the thing is, it wasn't getting better. Um, nag-worsen pa yung lagnat ko, balik-balik. Tapos yung ubo ko, nag-worsen. <clears throat> um, until the fourth day, uh, nung uh, minimedicate niya ako, uh, bigla ako nanginig. Parang may sinaksak sa akin. Bigla ako nanginig. Yung, yung panginginig na noon ko lang naramdaman sa talambuhay ko. Never ko pang na-experience yung panginginig na yun na parang nanggagaling sa puso, na nanggagaling sa sikmura, na hindi ko mapigilan. Nanginig talaga ako ng hindi ko mapigilan. And uh, it was the first time na nangyari sa akin yun. So when that happened, um, doon na ako pumayag na pumunta sa ospital. Siyempre, nung una, minamacho-macho ko pa. Hindi, kaya-kaya ko ito. Wala yan, wala yan. Pero nung manginig ako ng uh, uh, ibang klase, ang lakas. Na, yung lakas na hindi ko mapigilan dahil ako po, ano, because of my exercises and my discipline, ma malakas na tao po ako eh. Para makaramdam ako ng panginginig sa loob ng katawan ko na nagre-reflect sa labas na hindi ko mapigilan. Surprising sa akin yun. So, because of that, tumayag na akong mag-hospital. <clears throat> so, tumawag kami ng ambulansya. And then, pero sinabi ko, isang kondisyon. I talked to my friends and my family and my mom who was a doctor, who is a doctor, was with me. Um, Sabi ko, okay, so ang condition ko, pumunta ako sa hospital pero hindi ako magpapa-isolate. Dahil uh, ang dami kong kaibigan na namatay, uh, kamag-anak pa yung iba, nung ipasok sila sa isolation, tinubuhan, and it went downhill from there. So, pati kamag-anak ko, ganun din ang nangyari. So, I was determined na hindi ako mag-isolate. In fact, sinabi ko. So, dumating yung mga kukuha sa akin, puro mga naka-PPE. Tapos, uh, by that time, mahinang-mahina na ako and I uh, saw na, uh, you know, hindi ko sila kaya. Kaya sabi ko, sa mga, ano, sa mga uh, kasama ko, narinig nila. I'm saying this para hindi nyo gayahin, pero ito lang kasi yung, hindi para gayahin nyo, pero ito lang kasi yung sinabi ko. So sabi ko, I told them, and I was really serious. Sabi ko, huwag niyo akong i-isolate dahil pag in-isolate niyo ako, mamarela ko dito, sabi ko. And uh, I was dead serious because my gun was in my hand. Dahil alam ko nga na patada nila ako, tatali nila ako, tapos I'd be too weak to fight for myself, and then tutubuhan nila ako, and then it's a goodbye from there. Um, awa ng Diyos. Nung nakita ko na um, naintindihan naman ng mga tao. Uh, sabi ko, sige, lakad na tayo. So, um, kaya the whole time, kahit masama ang pakiramdam ko, you know, I just remain silent, tahimik lang ako, itulog ko lang siya. 
Um, so pag tiningnan ako ng mga doktor, mukhang okay ako. Pero yun pala, iba na nangyayari sa mga sa loob ng katawan ko. So, nakuha kami ng kwarto, ando ng mami ko, na doktora, siya ang nagbabantay, nag-aalaga sa akin, na tinitingnan yung mga protocols ay papasok sa akin, kausap niya yung mga doktor. And all along, kahit natutulog ako, I was half asleep and, and pinakikinggan ko lahat ng mga usapan. Alam ko lahat ang nangyayari. Kahit uh, mas makapakiramdam ko, very sharp, extraordinarily sharp yung utak ko. And I was, you know, uh, able to direct yung mga dapat gawin. Sasabi ko si, pag may mga hahanapin mga gamot, may mga kailangan mga tao, may mga problema na mama pag usapan kahit ako natutulog, sumasagot ako, sasabihin ko, Ante, sige, ito ako usapin, ito ang gawin, ito ang puntahan, patawagin si ano kay ganyan. So I was uh, a directing. And I know the conflicts um, sa lahat na nangyayari, sa mga doktor, sa bahay, sa asawa ko, dun sa uh, kapatid ko, dun sa lahat, alam ko lahat na nangyayari, parang I had an overview na I was a uh, Um, helping out and directing ito ang gawin, ito ang gawin, ito ang gawin, ito ang gawin. A day after he was brought to the hospital, I was alone in my room. One afternoon, that afternoon, as I was praying, praying to God, uh, at the latter part of my prayer, felt I felt a victory in my heart that I could not explain. And then I raised my hands in worship and, and I felt rejoicing in the presence of God. Two seconds later after I prayed, somebody called me, my friend called me up. And she said, call this number, call this girl, Beng, her name is Beng, she's from Houston, Texas and she's waiting for your call. And I said, okay, ate. Um, she gave me a little bit of background. Sabi niya, friend niya ito, who's a nurse in uh, Texas. So I called the number. And um, she was really from America. She was from, she's a Filipina nurse in America, in Houston. And she said, you should give him a vitamin C of 100,000 milligram in IV infusion right now. You know, that will change the game, she said. And then she explained to me who she's working with, where she's working. She said she's working with Dr. Joseph Barron in the team of Do Dr. Joseph Barron in Houston, Texas. Um, she said, you know, the, Dr. Joseph Barron is called the COVID hunter in America. He's called the COVID hunter because, he, because of all his efforts against COVID and he's world-renowned, he said. I didn't know who Dr. Joseph Barron until I, after we talked, I learned that see, Dr. Joseph Barron was um, like a hero against COVID because because of their protocol in FLCCC. So, so through Zoom, nag-usap sila. Tapos, nawagan niya kapatid ko. Yung kapatid ko naman, uh, yung mga kaibigan niya, doktor dito, na expert sa COVID, uh, inimbita niya rin para pag-usapan yung case ko. So, doon sila sa bahay, nag-uusap sila through Zoom. Tapos, kami naman ng ma mami ko nasa ospital kasama ng mga doktor dito sa Pilipinas, yung mga attending physicians ko. And then she called me up again, sabi niya, nakausap ko si Dr. Joseph Barron, he wants to help your husband. At that time, I didn't know what she meant, help. Because I didn't know what, I didn't know that there is an option, other option, for treating COVID. And that they have that option besides the hospital treatment protocol. Then she explained to me um, that she was teaching me things na hindi ko pa narinig before about 
how treat how they treat covid so basically she was telling me different things so sabi niya sa akin palagyan mo siya ng vitamin C infusion 100,000 milligrams every day Kinabahan ako dahil hindi ko alam kung papayagan niya sa hospital because Greco was in the hospital. So I also silently prayed about it. And then I talked to our doctor friend whose friend is the main doctor ni Greco. So I texted her, Doctora, can we please give a vitamin C na 100,000 milligrams every day for 3 days to Greco? She said, Sige, Titignan ko kung papayag yung attending physician. After 10 minutes, she got back to me. She said, okay, pumayag si Dr. Maguslog. Pwede siyang bigyan ng 100,000 milligram. Right? Then, it started there. Pinabigyan siya ng 100,000 milligram of vitamin C. And, she, at, si Ate Beng, she called me back again. She said, Si, jo- si Dr. Joseph Varon will help and also Dr. Ravilla will be giving the protocol because they are in the same group. Si Dr. Villa is from Florida, a Filipino-American doctor from Florida. She's based in Florida. She has a 100% batting average against COVID. Ibig sabihin po, hindi pa siya namamatayan ng pasyente sa COVID. Simula ng mag start ang pandemic because of the protocol that they are using to their patients to her patients so when I found out that my wife was able to organize his doctors um, who are using an alternative procedure alternative protocol hindi rin di severe na atoxy na ibinibigay ng uh, mga hospital ngayon dahil yun ang standard protocol na nanggani sa DOH at sa World Health which is really toxic na basta ah, COVID ka, severe, going critical o ito yan so toxic ka, tapos uh, RMD severe ka, toxic ka and then these doctors na kausap ng wife ko at ng kapatid ko um, have has com- a completely different perspective on what was happening to my body and to me. Um, and they had these uh, protocols na ibang-iba. You know, they were using high-dosage vitamin C, high-dosage melatonin. Kinargahan ako ng 100,000 milligrams ng vitamin C, high-dosage melatonin, ivermectin, and marami pang iba. Uh, meron, kinargahan ako ng steroids, Tapos pinatigil ang remdesivir dahil very toxic. Um, yung time na leron-leron, mga kinargahan din po ako. So, yung time na, na tinitingnan ako ng mga doktor at sabi no, he's okay kasi I was nakadip 4 pa daw ako eh. Tapos tahimik lang naman ako, hindi ako nakibo. Kasi nga, um, kinokontrol ko yung pain, kinokontrol ko yung hirap. And I'm not someone to complain because of pain. So pag tinitingnan ako nung, because athlete ako eh. Normal sa athlete na ganun. And, you know, you stay calm, you stay relax. Tapos you endure the pain. Tapos, um, so pag tinitingnan ako ng mga doktor, clinically sasabihin, okay siya, okay siya. Pero yung pala, yung mga doktor sa US, Nung tinitingnan yung ano, tsaka dito sa Philippines, kinukompute nila yung mga, ano ko, yung mga results. Sabi nila, one, pag bumaba pa ng one point, yung uh, parang score ni Greco, ICU na yan, tutubuhin na yan. So, uh, my wife and my brother called up my mom and asked her to join a Zoom meeting. Uh, eh, kami naman doon, nagkakagulo naman kami sa ospital dahil uh, nag, nag-pass out ako. Tapos, um, madaling araw na yun. Tapos, chin- chin- chinakarigahan ako ng mga 
kung ano-ano. Kaya natukunan ako ng kung ano-ano. Nandugo, tapos namin may bitakang gulo naman kami sa hospital. Tapos ang, on the other hand, yung kapatid, kapatid ko naman, tsaka yung asawa ko, kasama ng mga doktor, nagmi-meeting naman, sinasabi kung ano na nangyayari sa akin. And they have a completely different protocol. Ito sa ginagawa sa akin. So they called up my mom when they learned na ang sabi ng doktor, kung ganyan ang, vita, kung ganyan ang result sa mga test ng Greco, he has 36 hours to live. After 36 hour window, Pag hindi natin, pag hindi nyo naikarga itong mga gamot na to, wala na yan, mamatay na yan. At the time that I, clinically, at the time, sabi nung mga doktor na I looked okay. Yun pala, I looked okay because of the steroids that was uh, kinarga sa akin. That's why I looked okay. Pero sa loob pala, I was already um, going into cytokine storm where my immune system will be attacking my organs because of COVID or yung dinaanan ng COVID. Isa ko kasi mahal, isa ko kasi yung problema ng COVID, the COVID attacks the organs, yung internal organs natin. Hindi lang lungs, hindi lang puso, pero pati liver, pati um, kidneys, kung saan ka uh, pati veins, hindi sa utak, ang kamay mo magagil, blood clot ka na. So kaya may marami na stroke, marami na heart attack. Um, dahil because of blood clots, pagka labas ng hospital after COVID, blood clots. So yung, ang problema sa COVID is yung, uh, marami na mamatay sa COVID. Both doon sa, habang may COVID sila, as critical and severe, hanggang doon sa paglabas nila, yung post-COVID nagba-blood clot. So, kailangan tinitreat din po yun. Tapos, ang diferensya sa treatment uh, dito is that parang ang treatment protocol dito is uh, one treatment for all kinds of sickness. Hindi ko ganun ang COVID. Ang COVID pala, ang COVID treatment pala po is depende doon sa um, reaction ng katawan mo. Pag binigyan ka ng gamot, titingnan nyo reaction ng katawan mo. Pag hindi tama, it's either Ito as yung dosage or alisan yung palta ng gamot. Sa protocol na ginagamit mo ngayon dito sa mga hospital, kahit sa hospital po rito, sa po Pilipinas, you go to the pinakamagaling na hospital. This is the same hospital. Sa so, pinakamababang hospital, it's the same protocol. <clears throat> Basta sasaksaka ka ng remdesivir, sasaksaka ka ng toxi, tapos tatapusin nila po yung yung um, protocols na yun, yung pagkakasunod-sunod na yun, and then you're supposed to be okay. Ang problema, ang remde is for the virus. Um, et, at pag hindi pumasok dun sa timing, wala na yung virus, at kinakarigahan ka pero yung remde, gaya sa akin. Sabi nung mga doktor ko, tapos na yung virus, pero, Nandun ka na sa second stage, pero ang treatment sa hospital, nandun pa rin sa virus. Yun ang nangyari sa akin. Dahil, nung dumating ako sa hospital, tinitreat na ako sa bahay. So, pagdating ko sa hospital, patapos na yung virus, andun na ako sa cytokine. Tapos, itreat pa rin ng virus. Yung cytokine, ang, maging, ang problema ng cytokine, ay yung sarili mong immune system, attacking yun na. So, yun ang kailangan mong pigilan dahil, uh, yun na sumisira ng katawan mo. So, yun na sabi ng mga doktor. But then, I was determined, sabi ko, hindi ako i-isolate at hindi ako magpapatubo. So, it was not a, it was not, because it was not an option, the doctors, tinaas nila yung mga medication ko. And, um, hindi ako pinasok sa ICU. Kinagahan ako ng mga high flow oxygen, okay, may sarili ako nun. Um, tapos, binigyan ako ng mga alternative drugs. Kasama na dyan ng ivermectin, um, melatonin, vitamin C, na matataas ang dosage talaga, um, etc. etc. Napakarami yung gamot na pumasok sa katawan ko. Kaya, hindi ko akalain because I didn't know the details. Um, kaya pala paglabas ko ng hospital para akong mag-ano nangyari sa katawan ko para akong ano 
paravam a hindi ko alam ano how do you say para kung daya per na basa na wala ng lakas na hinihingal hindi makalakad ng maayos na mamanas um, dahil mahigit uh, parang dalawang linggo po ata ako sa ospital tinitirik pa ako sa bahay you know You know, you know, days just went by so fast, hindi ko na alam na gano'n na pala ako katagal. So, but you know, but all, all of those times, oh, you know, um, during those times na I was experiencing it, um, now looking back, I was certain na hindi ako mamamatay uh, pa that time. Even if the results of the test were saying otherwise ang taas-taas na po nung mga ano ko nung mga uh, D-dimers tapos um, ARDS na ako yung acute respiratory distress syndrome ando na po ako sa so talagang pang ICU na bagsak mga bagsak na ang mga oxygen ko tapos in fact itong kamay ko po rito literally ito punit na eh dahil kawalot kaya na na sila magturok ang itim na nung ganito ko, ang itim na nung ganyan ko, hindi ito kang itim na. Ang itim na yung mga legs ko rito, sa dami ng turok, tapos yung kaluwat kanan. Pagdating dito sa tiyan ko, may pasa na rin. Tapos umaga parang sa shopping ng dugo yung ospital sa akin dahil umaga hapon kukuha ng dugo, kaluwat kanan nagpapalit. Kaluwat kanan nagpapalit dito raw, tapos maya dito, maya dito, maya dito. Tapos araw-araw tatanungin na ako kung masakit. Sir, masakit po. Siyempre ako sasagot, bumamachongin ko, siyempre. Sabi ko hindi, pero siyempre masakit. Tapos pamaya may dumating na ako mga nurses na um, para sa akin lang, kumuha ng wife ko ng nurse na, nurses na magpabantay sa akin. Uh, para, kasi ang dami-daming pasyente doon sa ospital, uh, hindi na kaya talaga ng mga nursing staff. So isa pa yun sa magiging problema po ninyo pag pumasok kayo sa ospital dahil nasa ospital nga kayo pero sa dami ng pasyente uh, hindi ko naasikaso hindi naasikaso na maayos um, kung makapasok ka so dahil ganun nga COVID kasi merong stages ang COVID merong mild merong uh, moderate merong severe merong critical yung mild and moderate home treatment lang po pwede na yan as long as You know what to do, yun po ang ibibigay namin sa inyo today. So kung hindi ka naman severe, hindi ka pa critical, huwag kang masok sa ospital, mag-home treatment ka, pwede mong gawin itong treatment na binigay sa akin dahil from day one ng paglabas ko, uh, apat na po ang nabubuhay na araw-araw tumatawag ang mga tao dito sa amin asking help pa paano doon sila matutulungan, may sakit sila, may COVID sila, every day. Halos wala nung tigil kami sa telepono, answering them and helping them, whether to get into the hospital or to get treatment. Apat na po ang nabubuhay, uh, hindi pa ako kasama dun sa nag-undergo sa treatment ko, na nag Lahat ng mga tumatawag sa amin na mild buhay po lahat at gumaling. I'm Dr. Homer Lim of the Concerned Doctors and Citizens of the Philippines. Uh, I was one of the doctors, no, group of doctors, uh, na nag-manage kay ano, Chairman Greco Belhicano. So, together with Dr. Rafi Castillo, Dr. Randy Nicolas, uh, Dr. Iggy uh, Agbayani, Dr. Uh, Sham Quinto, uh, as well as, um, of course, the mother, Dr. Uh, Met Belihika, we were uh, co-managing uh, Chairman Greco's uh, medical condition, which was actually a severe form, no? Critical, actually, critical COVID case po siya. So, so the, the protocol no, that we use actually was medyo aggressive, no? Very radical and aggressive. So, initially, uh, Dr. Uh, Meth already started her on yung tinatawag nating intravenous vitamin C. No? 
So at marami talagang question yan. In fact, even as early as last year of April, uh, China or especially uh, Shanghai in China, no, they were already using I don't know, uh, IV vitamin C, uh, 25 grams every 12 hours. No? So niraran nila for about 2 hours, 3 hours yung vitamin C. But uh, in Dr. Uh, in uh, Dr. Uh, Metz, uh, you know, uh, recommendation. No? So he uh, she actually put uh, Chairman Greco on a 100 gram IV vitamin C. No, the reason for that is actually because yung uh, vitamin C itself. No, para siyang ano? Para siyang fire extinguisher. Kasi if you are aware, no, na lahat ng nagkaka COVID later on when they develop na tawag nating uh, pulmonary symptoms like difficult breathing, babagsak ang oxygen, no? Bigla silang nangihina, no? Nagkakaroon silang tinatawag na cytokine storm. So, ibig sabihin ng cytokine storm, yung immune system natin, yung panlaban sa immune system is actually uh, nag-overdrive, kumbaga nasosobrahan. Kumbaga sa ano, kumbaga sa mga sundalo at pulis, no? Kung ang virus eh dapat eh gagamitin mo ng pistol o kaya eh shotgun. Ang gamit kasi pagka dahil sobrang dami ng virus, ang ginagawa ng immune system, nag-over nag-over ano siya, overreact. So ang pinasasabog niya lahat, kumbaga parang ginagamit na niya missile tsaka granada. So of course, pag ginamit mo yun, may natatamaan ibang bagay which is your organ. So natisira yung mga organs natin, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, natatamaan lahat yun. So one of the ways to decrease or reduce yung tinatawag natin cytokine storm is actually giving IV vitamin C. So IV vitamin C has actually been shown to be effective in lowering yung tinatawag nating cytokine storm. So that was one of the uh, kumbaga yung kakaiba no. And then the other one would be uh, the yung tinatawag na vitamin D no. So Dr. Meth I think was giving around 50,000 IU a day. IU no. Normally uh, tayo ordinary would be taking some 800, some 5,000, some 2,000 units a day. Pero for Dr. Uh, for Chairman Greco because yun nga is very severe we know that in patients who are in critical or moderate even if you have mild moderate severe covid your vitamin d talaga is very very low the reason for that kasi vitamin d is also part of your immune system hindi lang siya pampatigas ng buto no it's actually one of the things that's very important vitamin d they found out if if you have very very low levels of vitamin d you're more likely to get infected you're like more likely to get hospitalized and most likely you will be admitted sa ICU. So, Dr. Dr. Meth Belhika was actually giving 5, 5, 50,000 IU a day, which is which is quite high, but it's still safe because uh, we were monitoring din yung vitamin D levels as well as liver enzymes. So, it's not true that vitamin D levels in short course of 50 to 100 is dangerous. Actually, it's not. No. So, aside from vitamin D and vitamin C, uh, of course, uh, it was also given a bit of uh, zinc. Now, zinc, of course, we know that zinc is antiviral. Din. And then aside from that, we also gave uh, high doses of melatonin. I think Dr. Rafi Castillo has already mentioned about uh, melatonin. So very high dose, but still very effective kasi ganun din it acts on the immune system. It tames the immune system. No? So and then we also have what we call yung ivermectin. No? So, Ivermectin works at all phases ng tinatawag nating COVID, whether it's in the in early phase, uh, cytokine phase, or yung post-inflammatory or yung thrombotic phase. No? So, because Ivermectin not only blocks the virus, prevents the virus from replicating, it also helps in tinatawag nating modulating or adjusting yung immune system natin. So, so that's why we also gave Ivermectin. He was receiving around, uh, if I'm not wrong around six to eight capsules a day of course lahat ito these are under uh, what we call uh, medical supervision kasi nga nasa hospital and then what is very very important i think and what dr meth also realizes you cannot be too gentle with regards to giving steroids so in the case of uh chairman greco we were actually doc uh, i'm sorry i forgot to mention uh, dr Marivic Villa, I think one of the you know more active uh, uh, consultants or in the group of doctors. No? It was actually Dr. Uh, Marivic who actually told, but you have to go higher. So 
the Dr. Meth actually gave uh, 250 milligrams of methylprednisolone, loading dose, tawag natin, loading yung unang dose, and then 125 milligrams every six hours. So yun yung pinaka, one of the biggest, uh, kumbaga, eh, uh, things that really helped um, uh, Chairman Greco. And of course, yung last was really, the real, I, I, for, for me personally, I think that what yung kumbaga shifted him to become better was actually yung Leronlimab, no? Leronlimab is a monoclonal antibody, no? It's uh, like all the anti, 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 anti uh, monoclonal antibodies, no? They're a bit more expensive kasi bagong gamot siya, no? But what's nice about uh, Leronlimab is it's not a, it's not IV, it's subcutaneous, kumbaga, ini-inject lang siya under the skin. And what's uh, good about this uh, is it's after even just two injections, which is 700 milligrams, two injections, uh, sabay, no, uh, you could see in 36 to 48 hours, they suddenly become better. And that is what actually uh, what happened to uh, Chairman uh, Greco, which is very consistent with everyone who we've give, given uh, Leronimab. So I think we're the only country outside the United States actually using Leronlimab, no? Uh, so, you could see talaga that uh, it's really, uh, kumbaga, eh, unique in a way na tayo lang as outside of United States is actually using Leronlimab. So, we really have to thank uh, Dr. Randy Nicolas with regards to trying to bring in uh, Leronlimab. And really, it has saved so many lives. And I hope those who are listening, especially the doctors out there, you look into Leronlimab because it's really, number one, safe. And effective, it will cut your hospitalization days, cut your ICU days, and will significantly improve the uh, survival of your patients. Hi, my name is um, Richard Nicolas. I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon, a heart surgeon, in other words. And the background why I got into uh, COVID-19 therapeutics, or yung mga gamot para sa COVID-19, is because um, as a frontliner, we operate on uh, COVID patients as well who require operation to drain fluid around their lungs or who need um, uh, vascular access for dialysis or hemoperfusion. But the problem is I'm also a kidney transplant recipient and I'm on chronic or lifelong immunosuppression. So I am actually at risk for uh, severe critical COVID if I get infected. So I spent, um, I spent the early part of the pandemic researching on possible treatment regimens, especially for severe critical. And that's where I came upon several researchers, researches done in 2005 and 2006 that identified the, the um, cytokine that was responsible for initiating what we call cytokine storm, or scientifically we call it uh, cytokine release syndrome, or CRS. And this cytokine that, we, I, that was identified then was based on patients that survived the first COVID epidemic of 2002 and that was the SARS-CoV-1. It affected parts of China, Hong Kong, Macau, Canada, parts of Europe as well, and Taiwan. And um, the results from many of the survivors identified a peculiar cytokine that was responsible for cytokine storm. We need to understand that the virus itself will not result in death it's the body's reaction to the virus going into a hot we can we can perhaps call it a hyper immune response and um, what happens is that your your body is actually responsible for a cascade or parang tuloy tuloy na, na domino effect no one will lead to another and lead to another. A cascade of cytokine release. And this causes all the inflammation that we see. Inflammation in our lungs, 
in the liver, in the brain, the heart, everywhere. And uh, that is the one that is life-threatening. So there are several, th there are actually two phases of the disease. One is the virus phase, we call it the virologic phase. Ito yung, ito yung mga symptoms, fever, cough, loss of taste, smell, body aches. And it usually lasts 14, 10 to 14 days depending on your immune system. The second part, ito yung nakaka, nakakamatay. Ito yung tinatawag na cytokine release syndrome or your cytokine storm. And um, this is mediated by our, our body producing cytokines. And um, if we are able to stop the initiating cytokine from occurring, then perhaps we'll be able to mitigate or stop the cytokine uh, storm from occurring. Or even if it does occur, we can help stop it or shut it off so um, the cytokine of concern was the cytokine CCL5 or other words known as RANTES R-A-N-T-E-S and um, there are several actually medications that can block the receptor of RANTES one is Maraviroc and the other one is um, Senesiviroc, but both have um, liver toxicity. The, the way it stops it is because it, it, it um, binds the receptor and it deforms the receptor, making the receptor inactive. The problem is there are many other functions of the receptor that are vital to the immune cell. So a better alternative would be a competitor competitive res, uh, receptor blocker and I found a drug called Leronimab which actually does that. It competitively binds the outer portion of the receptor in the cell, in the immune cell and uh, the not, not stopping its other vital functions but it stops Rantis from activating all these immune cells so it it stops the precursor cytokine from from uh, initiating cytokine storm. Medyo complicated nga po yung, ano eh, yung mechanism of action. There are a lot of other uh, mechanisms involved. Like I said, no, parang domino effect yan, cascade effect. And um, um, but a lot of a lot of uh, doctors in the U.S. agreed, in fact, that uh, it may perhaps. Uh, perhaps help patients. So a doctor in Montefiore in uh, New York, he's also the head of the Transplant Center of Mont Montefiore. His name is uh, Dr. Haresh Sitamraju. I don't know him personally, but I saw his uh, initial trial on several patients. And all these patients are transplant patients. That's the reason why it became very, very interesting to me because I'm also a kidney transplant um, recipient and these patients were all critical all on ventilators all uh, on uh, cardiac support medications and out of and he had a survival of almost 60 percent um, over 60 percent and there was no other medication that has shown a survival in critical more than that. The only, the only other medication that showed any survival benefit in critical was dexamethasone, which is a steroid. So there were other um, doctors around the US who also had similar results. One was Otto Yang. He's an infectious disease um, specialist from UCLA, Dr. Uh, Nicholas Agresti in Georgia. I believe he transferred already, but he was from Georgia when he did his, um, his series of patients and several others. Um, and um, they had similar results. So um, a group of, a group of um, men who had the similar vision of getting of uh, Leronima being uh, a, uh, 
possible treatment for severe critical COVID or yung tinatawag natin cytokine storm. Uh, we got together and we, we sort of um, made it a priority to try and get Leronlimab available in the Philippines. We were able to use Leronlimab. I was able to use Leronlimab on the first patient last March and um, subsequently used it on four other patients. All four patients survived and all four patients were um, severe, uh, one being critical. And the, uh, the, the, the thing about Leronimab is that uh, none of the patients who were treated developed long haul symptoms, meaning to say, walang long, long, um, or uh, chronic symptoms ng COVID 19. Meron mga ibang patients who recover, pero after recovery, even if they're RT PCR negative, may mga symptoms sila ng easy fatigability. Um, brain fog, madaling makalimot, madaling maka, uh, mawala sa pag-iisip. Um, others will, will, will complain of just absolute weakness and um, it can be very, very dysfunctional. But none of the patients who were treated on Leronima developed those long-haul symptoms. In fact, they did a phase uh, two trial in mild-moderate and a phase three trial in severe critical. And in severe critical, it showed, it showed a, a, a pattern of improvement and a pattern of deterioration once the medication was stopped. Excuse me, the design of the, the phase three trial in the US was such that only two doses were given. But we now understand that at least four doses spaced one week apart is the optimum but the phase 3 trial showed is at the first week so showed a 70 percent um, survival benefit at 14 days or two weeks it showed an 82 percent survival benefit in critical and um, when the when the drug was stopped they were still um, severe or critical when the drug was stopped you could see a gradual decrease in the survival um, over time, over um, time when the, after the, the effects of the drug wore off. The drug is now available in the Philippines. And uh, apart from the U.S., only the Philippines uh, has the, has Leronimab available in its, in its uh, armamentarium of treatment for severe critical. And I'm glad that um, um, Secretary Greco was able to avail of it and um, and uh, see how how he recovered very well from from COVID-19. I hope I hope his story becomes an inspiration to others who who seem to have lost hope or who who seem to be living almost in complete fear from from the disease. I hope it it gives little hope that there is a um, alternative treatment protocol for COVID in all forms from asymptomatic from excuse me from prophylaxis to mild moderate and even severe critical we're not saying this is a magic protocol that will save all people no it will save many people not all but it will save many so I'm happy um, I'm happy for the family of the Secretary Bellica and um, I'm happy that um, that uh, in the Philippines at least we get the opportunity to have this drug available. Loronimab is classified as an investigational new drug and in the it's undergoing another phase three trial a bigger trial in Brazil both for severe and for critical. The drug was initially designed for HIV patients as a new class of HIV drugs called viral entry inhibitors. So it prevents the virus from entering the target cell in human beings and uh, 
it's been studied for almost maybe seven years already maybe six six and a half years or in some patients on on the drug for six years and the safety record is just very very amazing yeah the studies in covid showed that it is even safer than placebo so um it, it's it's a very safe drug it's uh, it's available although it is only available through a compassionate special permit meaning to say the doctor needs to file on behalf of a patient with the philippine fda to have it released and for use in a patient who requires it and uh, the drug is available albeit very very limited uh, stock in the philippines but it is available so i do hope um, you know we offer a lot more hope and a lot more uh, success seeing the patients uh, recover very well even from severe and critical covid uh, the whole time i was going through it um, i was certain uh, now looking back is mang nangyari you know, during that time, I was certain that I was not going to die from COVID or yet. Um, even if my results were saying that uh, things are going downhill. I was certain in my heart and I knew that God was with me all the time. And I was not going to die. And, and that certainty was... You know, there's times na I was just laying down there quiet. Um, I had no fear because parang the Lord was showing me glimpses of uh, what's going to happen next. And kaya very sharp yung utak ko dahil at magbigay ng instructions, magbigay ng mga ito ang gawin ninyo. Kasi nga, while I was uh, half asleep, Pero parang, parang nakikita ka na, pero pinakikita na sa akin ng Diyos na, o oh, ito ang mangyayari sa susunod. So alam ko na, kaya pag narinig ko na pinag-usapan nila, sasabihin ko, hindi, hindi kanyan, ganito ang gawin nyo. O ito ang tawagan nyo, o ito lang yan, ito lang ang kailangan kausap niyan, ito lang ang patawagan kayo, ano, patawagan kay ganito, kunin si ganito. Kasi nga, um, now I realize na I was getting that idea from, those ideas from somewhere. So it was, it was from the Lord. As I was listening to to, wor to worship songs the whole time, the whole time, hanggang makatulog ako, I was just, uh, you know, being comforted with uh, worship songs and Bible verses. So, napakabait. Uh, awa ng Diyos, kabutihan ng Diyos. Uh, yung mga doktor ko doon sa hospital na pinasukan ko, um, Readily, readily agreed na ibigay sa akin yung alternative um, protocols that was not the DOH and the WHO protocols. You know, and uh, they signed a waiver and this allowed my mom and uh, our group to uh, uh, use their protocols. So, yung mga protocols na ginamit po sa akin are, are medicines na ginagamit na natin dito. Glutathione for my liver. Tapos uh, vitamin C high dosage, 100,000 milligrams a day. Ang sinasaksak sa akin na vitamin C, melatonin, na hindi ko alam kung gano'ng kataas, para 600 dose ata every day. O 600 milligrams ata every day. Um, you know, all this and, and all these people na hindi naman namin makilala, mga doktor na hindi namin makilala from the States and from here in the Philippines, ha? hindi naman namin kilala mag -asawa. We're just coming together to talk and, and to help out. Kaya I, and in every step, and that, that gave me confidence na alam ko that God was working. I know that we were going to go through a lot. The family was... I'm gonna go through a lot, pero alam ko that uh, God was at work, and I was uh, determined to go through it and uh, walk out of it. 
Kaya ako ginagawa itong video na to is so that uh, matutunan nyo yung um, alternative protocols na ginamit ko kaya ako nagre-recover ngayon nagpapagaling po ako ngayon nandito ako sa farm papagaling po ako ngayon nakita nyo wala akong oxygen daldal ako ng daldal dito I'm not yet 100% sabi ng doktor sa akin I may need I may need 3 months to recover pero kung magiging mabait daw ako and to, na inumin yung mga gamot ko at disiplinahin yung sarili ko na hindi sobrahan yung exercises ko and just stay within my schedule uh, syempre sa utak ko malakas ako pero ang katawan ko mahina naman pala ako so if I will be disciplined to follow doctor's orders baka in 2 months um, in 1 month I'll be 90% of my I'll get my I'll get 90% of my strength back and in 2 months I'll be um, 100% so kung magiging mabait po ako and uh, I've been uh, disciplining myself following uh, doctor's orders and uh, drinking my medicines um, eating healthy and uh, exercising uh, yung simple lang, lakad matanda meron ako dito 400 steps in 6 minutes um, nyagawa ko yun, kahit kaya ko sobrahan kasi sobrahan, nakikiramdaman ko ang katawan ko, so I'm getting better, getting stronger every day I'm not yet 100% but I'm getting there so I'm telling you this kasi um, if in case you are going through it what I went through or better less than what I went through or you know somebody going through this bigay nyo tong video ko bigay nyo tong uh, alternatives magamot na ininom ko tawagin nyo tawag, tawagin nyo kami tulungan namin kayo turo namin sa inyo ang point is that you have a choice if you want to use this what I'm saying is this worked for me buhay ako ngayon because of this medicines I didn't go to remdesivir I didn't go to toxic kung gusto nyo gawin yun it's up to you nasa iyo yan pero ask your doctor about it ask kung talaga bang uh, toxic yung uh, remdesivir na yan tsaka um, tosi na yan uh, let them tell you if it's toxic I didn't want it because it was toxic I wanted this and um, I wanted my itong ginawa ko and this worked for me and worked for my friends and worked for 20 other people that we are right now um, helping and medicating through phone Tawag sa amin ng tawag dito, kaya nanay ko wala nang bitaw sa telepon niya na the whole day hanggang madaling araw dahil ang dami ko talaga may sakit. Uh, it's your choice. If you wanna follow this, it's an alternative, solu uh, alternative protocols. Protocol, you can use this. This works. As far as I'm concerned, this works. So whatever the WHO says, whatever DOH says, uh, siguro nag-work din yun sa kanila marami din naman na buhay dun sa standard protocol nila ng uh, remdesivir at tosi marami din na buhay dun pero ito uh, marami rin kami na buhay dito at pwede nyo gamitin to at <coughs> gamitin sa bahay so um, yun lang po ang purpose ng video na to ako nagpapasalamat po ako sa Diyos na uh, binuhay niya ako at uh, kung baga sabi nga nila if, if I would have known the details of what I was going through uh, baka natakot po ako pero um, I didn't know the details I just knew the general ideas and I, uh, you know the presence of God was was just there and I I was you know I felt I was feeling it the whole time that's why gave me confidence and um, ngayon na nabuhay po ako um, second chance in life sabi nga nila I'm doing this video so that um, marami makaalam at matuto uh, dahil baka pwede nito isave ang buhay nila right after my story the president 
I mean, right, right after I left the hospital and then I told them na um, okay na ako, nahanap na ako, o hinahanap nila ako, okay na ako, and I didn't go to the normal protocols. Um, the president said, okay naman na ivermectin. I leave it to the patients and to the doctors. So, it's not true that ivermectin don't work. It works. But, uh, it can't work alone. Meron ding iba pang mga gamot kaya nga binanggit at marami pa na dapat inumin kasama nun kung lalo na kung tama sa'yo severe or critical uh, or moderate. Kung mild, baka pwedeng ivermectin plus you know, you drink your vitamin C and melatonin uh, hanggang moderate. Pero as prophylaxis, I think it works. You know, so consult your doctor and uh, ganun po. Uh, so, papasalamat ako sa Panginoon for this opportunity and I hope this video reach, reaches the person na nangangailangan nito or the family na nangangailangan nito. Uh, at the end of this video, bigyan namin sa inyo yung mga ininom kong gamot, paano namin ininom, sino pwede niya tawagan to order the medicines. Uh, so you can do your treatment, lalo na kung mild lang naman yan at moderate, you know, uh, do it at home. We can beat COVID. There are other ways and uh, alternative uh, medicines that you can use to beat this. So keep safe. Mahalaga po ang face mask. At mahalaga po ang pag-iingat, pagbiruin ng COVID, pagbiruin ng Delta. Magsabihin na hindi ako tatakot dyan. Dahil nakamamatay po yun. Totoo po sila. Um, kung ako tinamaan, uh, it can hit anyone. Po. So maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. I hope everybody's well and nobody gets it. So God bless ang uh, Diyos ang bibigay ng buhay at ang Diyos ang nagpapagaling. Salamat po sa Panginoong Diyos, Panginoong Jesus, dahil siya nagpagaling sa akin. So maraming salamat po.